Welcome everybody on my quick talk about the preconditions for a good code review. Uh, for me, uh, the code review is like sowing the seeds uh, by a farmer on a field. Yeah? When you think about the, uh, this process of, of, of sowing the seeds, uh, you can't like sow the seeds anywhere. Yeah? You need to have a field on which you can sow the seeds so they, that they can grow. Yeah? And every good farmer knows that this is a well-prepared field, but when he will try to sow the seeds on this kind of field, nothing will grow. Even though we will have the best seeds for the best grain or the best corn. Yeah? This kind of field, nothing will grow. You have to prepare the field. Yeah? You have to do a couple of things. You have to plow it. Yeah? You have to remove the weeds from the, from the field. You have to fertilize it. And then, after you will do all of this stuff, you will end up with the pretty nice field from the previous, uh, previous uh, picture. And now uh, you have a point when actually the sowing of the seeds makes sense. Yeah? In this case, it really doesn't. And I, when I'm uh, working with teams, I often feel that when they are approaching the practice of the code review, they are actually like uh, the farmer who is trying to put the seed on the field that is full of weeds. So even though they are trying, uh, even though they are uh, like getting the time sitting with each other, the code review doesn't give them the effect that they wanted. Yeah? The quality is not really much bigger. It's most cases a pain in the ass. Nobody really likes doing a code review. Yeah? Who of you has this thought in his head that when he uh, wants to do a code review, he thinks, yes, one more hour and I will be able to do a code review for my friend. Yeah? Or maybe, yay, in uh, two days or tomorrow, somebody will review my code. It will be so much fun yeah? doing this. Yeah? Everybody thinks so. Yeah? And I think that the reason for it is that we are actually doing this on the projects we are not, which are not prepared for it. Yeah? So during my talk, I would like to tell you what I think are a good preconditions. Yeah? So what, are, uh, in, what is uh, like plowing and fertilizing uh, in the scope of uh, projects and IT. Yeah? So first of all, defining expectations. Uh, in most cases, when some one person writes a code and other co and other person is is reviewing it, we they do not have a, a similar expectations. Yeah, one one person can ask, uh, "How would you like this code to be written?" And the other person says, "Well, just write it the best way that you can, and after you do it, I will tell you if I like it." In most cases, it's exactly how it looks. Yeah. We don't know at the beginning what should be, uh, what our code should look like, yeah? what the other person likes. Yeah? I'm often doing uh, this experiment of on, 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 on trainings and when I'm working with teams. I'm asking, do you think it's a good idea to write a short methods? Yes? So do you think that short methods are a good idea? Yeah? And basically everybody says, yes, of course, short methods are a good idea because they increase readability yeah, and they uh, conform to single responsibility principle and for sure we should write short methods. Yeah? And I say, yeah, great, everybody agrees. And then I ask everybody to uh, privately write a number on a piece of paper what this person thinks that short method uh, should have, how many lines of code should this short method have. And now everybody is writing, everybody is showing, and everybody has a different number. For one person, the short method is seven to 10 lines of code. For the other person, it's one screen. For the other person, it's good enough. Yeah? Some other people, maybe 20, 50. Yeah? So 
if you don't have a clearly defined expectations about what do you think the, for example, yeah, the method length should be, then it's really hard to do a code review because you will just argue about uh, what is the actual length of the uh, of the method. Yeah, you can imagine that two people uh, like one thinks that short method is seven lines, the other thinks it's one screen. They cannot communicate. Yeah, they will fight because there is not no a common standard for it. So, uh, I would like to show you a couple of common patterns that I see that mature teams. Uh, have created to mitigate a couple of those problems. First of all, the code style. It's a trivial thing, but mostly, but, or basically, nobody has it. Or even if somebody has the code or something has a code style somewhere in the wiki, nobody is really paying attention for it. And it's a really important thing for a healthy code style. Yeah? Why should I... Uh, get a feedback from a person that I, for example, used wrong formatting, used wrong naming. Yeah? If I could have a rule defined previously among all the person in the team when they can agree upon how do we name things, how many parameters should our method have in maximum or in minimum, uh, what rules do we have about commenting the code? Are we doing this? Are we not doing this? When are we doing this? Yeah? What are some common practices? How do we do error handling? All of those things are basically cross-cutting concerns uh, on your language that you can define in advance. And in this way, you can eliminate a lot of conflict during the code review. Because if you have this in the code style and the person that is writing the code knows that needs to confirm to this code style, then there is nothing to check during the actual code review for these things, yeah? because by default they should be done. Yeah? At least we are just checking if they are, we are, if you are sure they are there. But the expectations for the person that writes the code, they are there. They are clear how the code should look like. Yeah? Okay, this is the level of the code, but the next level is the level of your libraries, the level of your frameworks that you are using. Yeah? Uh, each framework, for example, in Java World, uh, I don't know, JEE, uh, Spring or anything other that you are using, there are some best practices for doing some, some of those things. Yeah? Or there are some particular ways how you are doing it in your team. Documenting it in uh, the way of showcase. What I mean by showcase, do anybody know about the sample pet clinic project for spring applications? Yeah? I believe that each team should have this kind of pet clinic, pro uh, pet clinic project, so like a separate project, which is reference implementation for the default patterns that you are using across your application. So reference implementation for how do we do persistence, how do we do validation, how do we do automated testing, yeah? how do we do form processing, how do we do security. These are all repeatable tasks that we are doing every day, which can have a common structure. Yeah? Maybe there is a variation upon them. Yeah? We can do them in a couple of different ways, but it's a really good thing to have a separate project that can be a source of the agreement upon how the good code looks like. Because then, it's not like on the code review, I think this code is bad. No, I think this code is good. Then there is a clear reference point. This code is, does not conform to what we have in the showcase. Take a look at the showcase, and then we can see what is there. Yeah, this is, how, this is the way how we are doing this. Why you are not doing it? Maybe you have some good reason. Maybe we should sh change the showcase in this case. Maybe, maybe we can add, it, add some new aspect there. Yeah? Who knows? But there is a clear reference guide and a clear place when our rules are set. Next level are architectural guidelines. So every application has hopefully some kind of architecture. Yeah? Maybe some of you are using layered architecture. Maybe some of you are using microservices. Some of you may be using, I don't know, port and adapters, pipe and filters, different kind of stuff. Maybe different kind of stuff for different kind of places. And having a common guidelines to give people so that they do not have to invent some of the things by themselves, 
since either way we are doing code review and after this code review we will tell them that they did it wrong. Yeah? Since we know what is wrong, we can articulate it in some way. Yeah? We can create some simple, some simple architectural guidelines that can say this is a place for security and this is a place for the validation. Yeah? And these are the modules that are we doing this, this and this. And this is how we separate the modules. Yeah? This is how we communicate between modules. These are a couple of ways that we can do it and these are advantages and disadvantages of those things. Yeah? These are actually really uh, like simple ideas, but they give uh, the people like shared knowledge and the shared understanding of where we are actually standing with our uh, with our code, with our style. Hmm? Okay. After we will have all of this, the next step. I, maybe if, if this was the plowing, then we will call now all the fer fertilization of our field. It's the automation. Actually, most of the stuff that I told you before, you don't have to do it by hand. There are tools for it. If you're using Java, which is statically typed language, you can use SonarCube and automate lots of it and still get uh, additional checking for the most common errors that programmers do. You don't have to do it by hand. You can uh, take your uh, like st check style and implement all of the rules about your code style in the check style and also check it automatically. Yeah? But checking it automatically is one thing. The crucial thing is if you break, if somebody will break the rules, then the build should break also. What does it mean? It means when you're writing a code as a developer and you, by accident of course, yeah, break some kind of, some, some of those rules. When you commit the code and then your uh, continuous integration server picks up your commit and runs analysis on it, the build fails if it, fi if it finds something. Yeah? Because we, if you have a sonar cube and it's not connected to your build, then nobody is looking at it. Nobody is getting a pain of build not working because of the rules about your code style, about your quality, about your even security broken. Yeah? So the most important thing is break your build. If somebody breaks the rules, then what you have, if you have a green build, that means that all of the rules that you automated are actually already checked. And that means you don't have to do it on the code review because most of the things was already done. Yeah? Empty catch block, yeah? checked, no empty catch blocks. Formatting checked, everything is okay. Package dependencies with jdepend, for example, checked, everything is okay. There are, of course, some things uh, that uh, cannot be automated. And those things we put on a checklist. Why do we use a checklist? Because we still want to uh, like articulate the expectations that we have from a code review. The checklist is a point-by-point -point list for the code review uh, that the reviewer knows what things he needs to check, and the reviewee knows which things he needs to think about when he is writing the code, so that there are no um, surprises during the code review. Yeah? Uh, the checklist should be minimal. The checklist should be minimal. Uh, most of the things should be automated. Yeah? Shit. <laughs> okay. So now, we can, after we have all of this, this is a place where the field is cleared, when we can start to uh, sow our seeds and expect them to grow. But the most important thing for the code review is that the process of code review is not about finding the bugs. It would be like saying, if, if I would say that, that code review is for finding the bugs, it would be like, uh, I'm working as a programmer, I'm doing this soft only for money. Yeah? The money is, of course, important. But the question is, is this the main reason for doing this stuff that we do, that we are getting up every day and going to work? Yeah? Maybe there is something interesting about it. The same approach uh, should be taken with the approach to code review. 
If you have all of those things, as I said, explicitly created with a code style, with architectural guidelines, with your showcase, and most of the things are automated, there is actually really nothing, uh, not really much to check during the code review. What you actually want to check is um, the readability of the code base. Yeah? Maybe the naming, the context, is it working as it's supposed to be? You can focus yourself on the design, on the exchanging the knowledge, how you solve the problem. Why did you solve the problem this way? Yeah? Why did you use this library and not that library? Yeah? I'm not trying to like, tell you why your code sucks. I'm trying to learn from you, and I'm letting you learn from me. Yeah? And this is the power of the code review, the approach that you are taking. Yeah? to learn from the other person and not to find him a bug and make him fix it. Yeah. OK, so these are the links. My name is Łukasz Szydło. And if you have some additional questions, uh, please come. I will be here for a couple of minutes. So thank you very much. <laughs>